Welcome to the Ramp 2022 tutorial video series where I am going to attempt to wing my way through making a Doom map and explaining all the concepts as I go. I'm going to be using Ultimate Doom Builder. Other editors are available, the concepts will be very similar. But let's just start up UDB for now. You'll be able to see me left clicking in red, right clicking in blue, and you should be able to see my uh, keyboard input as well down on the bottom left. Right, so let's cancel out the updates and check our game configurations. We set up two in the last video. Uh, we set up Doom Format and UDMF. Like I mentioned, Doom Format is the original, uh, the way that levels used to be made when Doom was first released. UDMF is a new format that's fan-made and contains all the extensions that people have invented over the last three decades, which is more extensible but much more overwhelming. Uh, so let's start with the Doom format and maybe at the end of this I'll go back and translate to UDMF and show you how, can, how you can add some magic with that as well. Right, with that set up, new map, uh, we want to use our Doom format. Uh, level name, you would change this if you were making a WOD with multiple levels in it, but for a single level WOD, map one is absolutely fine. Click OK and it will start a new map for us. So this is going to become our overhead map view of the level, and we'll be able to draw out our pieces of the game here and put them together. Uh, there are four concepts that we should know about before we start, uh, accessible with the shortcut keys that are the initial of their name. Uh, vertices mode, uh, a vertex is simply a point on the map. Line depth mode for L, uh, a line is a line, what can I say, that goes from one vertex to another. If we make enough lines and enclose a space, we will have a sector, S, uh, and sectors are vertical slices of the level with their own floor and ceiling heights and properties. And finally, things which are things in the level uh, that aren't part of the geometry. Uh, these can include player starts, monsters, weapons, ammunition, health, any pickups, any entities in the level that are moving about, uh, those come under things. So let's get rid of those uh, example things and start drawing something out. I'm going to start uh, with a long thin room and to begin with I'm going to forget to actually tell you what I'm doing here because I've been doing this for so long. Uh, but to begin drawing all we need to do is right click somewhere or alternatively you can press Control and D and then you get a prompt for where to start drawing. Let's just draw a long thin room here. Alright, so we've got our rectangle. Uh, what we can do immediately is press Q to go into the 3D mode where you can fly around the level with uh, EDSF and you can just see how it looks uh, in 3D without having to start up uh, Doom and uh, wander around it like that. It is an amazing difference from how we used to have to do it in the 90s and it's very welcome. Alright, so so far that's a boring rectangle. I'm going to go to Things mode with T, double click to place one down, and we're going to have a player one start. Uh, we're going to save what we've got so far, uh, just in our ramp starter pack folder. I will call this Hell for it for now, and we'll see where it goes. So let's just show you this in GZ Doom. Under the play menu with the down arrow you can select your difficulty level, you can select whether you want monsters to exist or not, and we can click the play button. All right, this has come off a bit off the screen so let's move that a bit. And there we go, we have a working Doom 2 level uh, for a given definition of level. So let's spruce this up a bit. Uh, I want this to be a little corridor that the player starts in and then there's going to be a door off to the side that leads to the rest of the level. So I'm going to hit Control D this time, and that gets me to drawing lines. And just click four times, and that's going to form our doorway. Then we're going to have maybe a, a section up here that's a bit longer and wider than our original sector. You can use the arrow keys to pan around the map, by the way, or you can hold down the space bar. 
often you'll see me uh, zooming out one place and then zooming into another part of the level, uh, which is my habit, but it can be disorienting. I'm trying to remember that the spacebar is there these days. Um, if we decide that uh, I don't really like the shape of this and I want to edit it, we can go into vertices mode with V and we can right click to drag uh, these vertices around. All right, so again, these are all very flat. Uh, we want to spruce these up because it's Doom 2. I'm going to click on the surface here and I'm going to scroll with my scroll wheel down one, two, three, four. That'll do for now. Now you'll see that having taken this space down, the wall above it is exposed uh, and it will need a texture now. Uh, in Doom terminology, these are called upper textures. Uh, each line has an upper texture that will be displayed above the space it exposes to the level, a lower texture, which will be below, and a middle texture, optionally, usually done on outside walls, but sometimes with uh, two-sided lines as well. So let's go into the property here by right-clicking it. We're going to select an upper texture, and we're just going to use Star Tan 2 for now. The other side will be the same, so I'm going to hit Ctrl and C while pointing at that to copy the texture. And you can either hit Ctrl and V to paste it, or you can middle click, which has the same effect. Okay, I want a set of stairs to go down to a sort of courtyard area here. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, that'll do for now. So to form a set of stairs, we need to draw more sectors to divide the level into vertical slices. And I'm going to just do this repeatedly. There are shortcuts for doing this. There's a dedicated stair builder tool, but I prefer showing it uh, all the way from first principles first before using the uh, tools to shortcut it. So let's use our scroll wheel to bring these up. And then we've got our way down to the ground. This will be our rail that divides the stairs from the rest of the room. I'm going to raise this by four, uh, one, two, three, four, away from this top step, because the maximum height that the Doom player can ascend in one go is 24 uh, map units. Uh, and going up by four, this raises it by eight, so that's 32 map units high. All right, this is probably a good time uh, to say that even though I've called this map Hellfort, it doesn't look much like a fort. It looks more like the Empire's base from Star Wars. So we're going to want to retexture some of this. Uh, if we go into lines mode, you can right click on the line to edit it. You can see the middle texture here is Star Tan 2. Let's choose something a bit more castly. Now one of these brick textures will do. We'll use brick 6. Okay, if we go into 3D mode, you can see that's been applied. Uh, because that would be incredibly tedious doing it all individually, we can copy a texture, middle click, middle click. We can also select multiple walls, textures, and then middle click to apply that there. Uh, let's look at this floor now. And instead of going right click to get the properties and then going into the textures, what you can do is control and right click to go straight to the texture browser. Now in the original Doom, uh, textures were arranged in two places. There's flats, which were floors and ceilings, and there was textures, which went on the walls. Uh, this is because they had to be stored differently in the original Doom graphics files, but now we have GZ Doom, uh, it doesn't care. You can equally apply wall textures to floors and floor textures to walls. But I prefer to be somewhat consistent about it and stick with the flats versus textures uh, original definitions. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use floor 5.4, which is reasonably similar to our uh, bricks on the walls here. I'm going to go outside here and apply these down the stairs. And then at the bottom, uh, let's have a more outsidey texture. Uh, I happen to know there's one called grass. Maybe I don't want grass, actually. If I scroll down here, there's going to be some uh, uneven rocks. Yeah, this one I'll do. All right, uh, we've got quite a long way to texture here, so I'm going to copy this texture again. 
And this time I'm just going to hold down shift and left click to select all the adjacent walls that have this texture and just middle click uh, to paste it all in. Let's work on the steps now. Control right click, uh, use one of the step textures. Uh, this one will do, that looks fairly stony to me. And what can we do here? Uh, let's look for a texture that uh, we could use. That's a bit different from the ones that uh, we've got so far. Maybe this brown 96 texture. That looks good. Let's change this floor around uh, to something like that. And let's raise this ceiling here. And again, uh, we can select multiple textures, uh, multiple flats, ceilings, by selecting them individually. We can also control click. What does that do? Uh, I think control click select all the adjacent ones that are the same height, maybe the same texture as well. It's a bit difficult to remember. Uh, and we're going to make this taller. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to give us a, some towering walls. Okay, and we've got this uh, ceiling to sort out as well. Don't want to use the same uh, texture on the ceiling that I do on the floor. I'm in the wrong section. I need to look at flat. Uh, this one will do. All right. So that's how to build a basic outline of a level by separating it into sectors and manipulating their floors and ceilings and textures. I'm going to go on and uh, do some placement of things in the level and some sprucing up of it as well. So let's say that we want some monsters for the player to encounter down here. Uh, I'm going to go into things mode with T and then right click or double click to place a new one. We're going to make this face left and we're going to monsters and select the imp. So when the player comes out here, the imp will see them and it will start to attack. I'm going to control C the imp and control V him a couple of times to have some monsters hiding around the corner for the player to encounter later. And they're going to face to the right. So the player's going to want a weapon to deal with these imps. I'm going to place a shotgun placed temptingly beyond the first imp. And maybe we'll want some light sources as well, because you can see that the level is fairly flat just now. And we want to add a bit of detail. Uh, you would be amazed by how you can spruce up a level just by adding bits and pieces to flat square sectors. I'm going to actually change my uh, grid size here so I can do some finer detail. And you can do that with the bracket keys, square brackets. Let's make this, uh, yeah, 64 wide. You can copy and paste sectors as well if you go into sectors mode with S, Control C, Control V. I'm going to make it that, okay. Now we're going to play some things. Uh, let's use some light sources. And we're going to use the tall red fire stick. We're going to place them there. Now on their own, in the original Doom, uh, those won't give off light. In GZ Doom they've been enhanced a bit, and if you're using the uh, dynamic light setting, you can see that they are giving off some light and making the room a bit less flat. Uh, but to enhance that or exaggerate it, or just if you're using the original Doom, uh, we can also alter the brightness of sectors. Uh, so if we select all our sectors here and right click to get the properties, you can see that there's a brightness property. If I take that all the way down to 64. You see that might be a bit much if we load it up in the game again. It's spooky, but I don't really want this atmosphere just now. So if we select them all again, this time we can hold down the control key and use our mouse wheel up to gradually bring the brightness up, and 128 will do. Now, I don't want these to look like they're casting light on the walls, so I'm going to make some new sectors by drawing some lines with Control D. Uh, 
It's going to look like that, and I'm going to raise the brightness of these. One, two, and raise the brightness of these. One, two, approximately. So now you can see that it looks vaguely like the torches are casting the light on the walls, and uh, this is where they meet, because that's how physics works. Uh, we can also make a little decoration on the ceiling. Uh, maybe I want a, a wooden beam going across. So having drawn the lines to form that sector, we're going to drop that down two spaces. And we're going to use a wooden kind of texture here. I wonder if there are any suitable ones within Doom 2. This one could do it. It's got horizontal planks. So there we go. And we're going to alter the sectors that make up the bottom of that wooden panel as well. I'm going to use a flat. I don't need flags. Uh, are there any flats called wood? There aren't. Uh, we can use flat 5-2. It's going the wrong way. Uh, in UDMF, you can actually rotate uh, how a sector displays its floor and ceiling, but uh, as we are in the original Doom format, we can't. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. For, no, I'm not. That looks terrible. That'll do. Okay. Uh, let's do another one across this part. This will be simpler because we've only got one sector to cut across. One, two, and we're going to copy and paste our textures from there. All right. So this is starting to look a bit more interesting now. Uh, maybe we also want to have a little alcove here. I'm going to make this 24 map units uh, for reasons you will see later. Here is later. Uh, if we select this and select this, uh, there are a couple of uh, textures that I like to use to separate uh, different wall textures, and those are the support 2 and support 3. And here uh, we can use a different brick texture to uh, make the room look a bit more interesting. Uh, maybe this one? So you can see that uh, we've got a repeating pattern because we applied the texture uh, I'm going to raise the brightness actually by pressing B and that puts everything to full brightness. You can see that uh, we've got a repeating pattern and just to align everything uh, we can press Ctrl and A while highlighting one of the walls. What that does is it just makes sure that each wall runs into the other. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing over here because if I artificially move this about a bit you can see that uh, Textures that get misaligned don't look very good. We can hit Control and A, and that will align everything to everything else as best as it can. All right. Now again, these don't give off light by themselves. Uh, we could make this section a bit brighter uh, by Control and Up, and Control and Up a bit more. You can experiment to see what looks best for lighting. Maybe if we take that slice and control down it. That looks just about passable. And let's give the player some ammunition. We're going to hit T for things mode again. We're going to give them some shotgun shells. Going to put one in the room they start in. Uh, one behind the shotgun and one down here. Let's play this as it is. We've got our more stripy lighted room. It's looking a bit more interesting now. We've got our sort of al alcove shrine. Here's the imp that's seen me. And there come the other imps. All right. Uh, let's work on improving this now, because I called this outside before, and it doesn't really look like outside. For a start, it's got a ceiling. Uh, there is a special property uh, that Doom 2 has uh, for skies. 
And it works a bit like a magic paint, is how I've always described it, that if it sees this particular flat name, it will ignore what the flat is, and it will draw the sky behind it instead. And the special flat name is F Sky 1. And you can see that uh, just working here. Uh, often, uh, I find that a border around here makes it uh, look a bit less uh, stark, the difference between the walls and the sky. So I'm going to draw an irregular border around here. And this can be any shape. Uh, if you are a computer graphics expert, you may be horrified that I am not making convex shapes. Uh, but don't worry, Doom will sort that all out for us and split them into uh, convex subsectors when it runs. All right, um, so let's select all the sectors that I made when I was creating that. We're going to make those uh, our flat. And then we're going to pull this down with our mouse wheel. Maybe this will go as far as that. Okay. Going to put some more bricks around there, hit Ctrl and A to align them all. And that's looking a bit better. Let's build on this a bit, because like I said, you can make uh, square sectors far more interesting by just attaching little bits and pieces to them and uh, playing with floor and ceiling heights. Let's make this, let's give this another little dent there. Uh, I'm going to press V and right click to make some new vertices uh, so that I can make this wall have a bump. And maybe we want to have a little window from the starting area so we can look out onto this courtyard. So I'm going to draw a new sector with Control and D and just form that. So we're going to move this up. We're going to go one, two, three, four, uh, so that the player can't jump over it. And that'll do for the other side. Control A to align everything again. Hides every sin imaginable. All right. Uh, as far as further decoration goes, I really like when uh, it looks like the players come from somewhere. Uh, when they start a level. So again, I'm going to make a 24 deep texture. I didn't mean to make it 120 units wide, so I'm going to go into vertices mode with V and pull this open. We're going to make this a door. Uh, the big door textures are good for this. Here's a medieval looking one. And that texture said it had a height of 112. And you can see our sector. If you look in the bottom left, it's got a height of 128. So I'm going to draw the ceiling in to make it lower so that the texture doesn't repeat itself. And once again, I like using support three on the edges of doors. Uh, now because we've aligned textures before using Control and A, these textures are aligned on the wall so they'll wrap uh, the stones that are already there. And we don't want that for support three because now it looks misaligned. Uh, so to reset all of the alignment we've done, you can hit Control and Shift and R and that will just put the texture alignment back to zero, zero. All right, let's do a bit more with this. I want to bring this down until the sector is maybe 128 high. And I'd like to bring this one down as well. Uh, maybe a, a bit higher than that. And I also, I also want to change the texture of the outdoor side of this castle so that we're not just going through the same texture all the time. So let's select one of the walls and look for a suitable outside stone texture. I'm going to go into texture one. Oh, I haven't looked at the uh, categories uh, yet. The textures are quite usefully uh, separated into categories. This isn't a Doom 2 thing. This is entirely something that UDB does. Uh, and that can help you in your search for textures as well. I'm going to use these brown bricks. Because they don't look shockingly different against the background. I'm going to paste them surrounding the windows first so that uh, I've made a space that I can use 
shift left click to select them all uh, because otherwise select selecting everything would just go into the room as well and there we go uh, this text is a different size from the previous one so I'm just gonna hit Control A again you can see a bit of a seam here but you can sort that out with a bit of manual work all right so we've got our dark area in here we've got a bit lighter when we go outside one more thing i like to do is make the brightness of anything that's not directly exposed to sun a bit lower one two and that'll do all right let's make this a bit more interesting still we're gonna have a little structure over here uh put that up by 64 uh, paste that wall texture on and we're gonna have a little set of stairs that reaches up to it I'll make them go around this side I'm going to raise my uh, grid size again I think that'll do raise that up so it's two below and four below and six below we're going to go over to our steps copy that texture paste it onto there I want to also make this have a brick texture instead of the rocks below it and let's see what this looks like if I put this there it's not great it doesn't look absolutely terrible uh, but maybe we want to replace this with something else now that we've got this platform, uh, we can put something interesting on it. Uh, maybe a couple of uh, decorations as well. And let's see, what do we want the player? I'm going to lower my grid size again. What do we want the player to have to deal with here? If we put a shotgunner, uh, I always call this a shotgunner, but it's not. It's sergeant. Then that adds a new threat to the player that they'll have to deal with. Even the weakest enemies, the former human and former sergeant, can be formidable when they're left unchecked because they can hit scan you, hit you instantly. Uh, let's give the player some health in here. Not just a health bonus, let's make that a medikit. Uh, for them to remember about if they need to go back and heal up. Gonna put a stim pack up here. And maybe some more shotgun shells as well. Alright, so I'm thinking that eventually uh, we'll have a door here uh, that goes in inwards and uh, into the rest of the level. Uh, but for now, let's just give this a test again. Well, you can see them shooting at me. So I'm going to run and get the shotgun. We might want to put some uh, cover or a more interesting decoration in the middle here just so that the uh, player isn't totally exposed and then we can get the stuff there. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to draw an ellipse. I'm going to make this just 16 sides. Uh, what does this mean? Radial drawing? Uh, I'll turn that on. Oh that's great. I've wanted that for ages and I never realized it was there. <laughs> Um, let's build a pillar out of two circles. Um, one of them is going to be 192 wide. The other one, let me go back to the circle tool there with radial drawing. The other one's going to be that wide. Uh, we can drag sectors around, select them both. Uh, approximately in the middle there. It's nice not to do uh, symmetrical levels and plonk something into the center because uh, asymmetrical rooms are much uh, more interesting to look at. And I'm going to rise that up uh, by 128 maybe. There we go. Uh, what can this look like? I'm going to put some skulls on this. Uh, you can see the repetition caused by the textures, and we're going to control and A that. Again, doesn't look absolutely great because we've got this uh, repetition that's uh, going on where there's a seam. Uh, I might fix that later. 
And that'll do for now. All right. One of the other things you might have noticed uh, is that when we started firing, the imps here woke up as well. And maybe I don't want that to happen because I want them to ambush the player uh, when they're down here. Fortunately, I can do that uh, with the very aptly named ambush players flag on the monsters that I can set by right clicking them. Uh, this means that instead of waking up when they hear a sound, they will wait until they have a direct line of sight to the player. And that's a way of managing monster encounters and making them a bit more interesting if there are monsters that uh, wait to see the player first. And add yet another monster down here, make that a demon. And have it as an ambush as well. Uh, I'm not going to make it facing this way on second thought because then it'll just look into this window and you'll get a line of sight to the player almost immediately. So I'm going to make this just face the wall. And uh, ambush monsters don't have to be facing the player to see them, as long as they've been woken up with a sound first, uh, as soon as a player is within line of sight in any direction they'll wake up. What else can we do here? It's nice to just scatter some uh, pickups around, make the level look more interesting. I'm going to add some uh, beams on the wall or just uh, bits jutting out. And I want these to be out of the level, so I'm going to just delete these sectors, having drawn them. And we're going to select the, maybe the metal 2 texture. We're going to all, uh, which is nicely uh, nondescript. And what looks nice, uh, I'm trying to see if that works, well that doesn't look bad actually, I'm, I'm going to keep that. So now we've got our courtyard, we've got an encounter. You probably heard the imps behind me and the demon waking up if they saw me. Alright, so now we've got a decent little fortress. I don't usually uh, do hellish castles for my levels, I'm, I'm very much a tech-based person, so this is an adventure for me as well. And I think that looks good uh, for a first tutorial. Uh, next time we'll talk about making some of this level interactive so that the player can push on things and affect things in the level.